All right, so today I'm working on this trailer I bought recently. It's a seven foot wide, 18 foot long landscaper with a dovetail. And I bought it. It needed some work and I negotiated a deal to where it was, you know, cost effective uh, to do the work and, you know, not be at a point where I do the work, but I could have just bought a brand new one. I still need to be under what a new trailer price would be, okay? Um, so, that being said, I looked it over and I showed in the video where all this stuff was in the suspension, the eyelids and stuff was worn out. We had tire wear here, it looked like it was rubbing here, <clears throat> but I couldn't quite grasp why this part still had some tread, but the center didn't. Because, I mean, these tires do come with a kind of a curve to them, but if it was bent, you would have thought it had been eating more of this off. Maybe not, maybe it wasn't bent that bad, but I looked at the inside of the tire and looked at the inside of the fender and it told the same story that this this axle was bent like this <clears throat> or rubbing like that and i told the guys well it's whatever it is i mean the suspension's worn out and that axle's probably bent looks like it's bent so i jacked it up and as i did the one tire just didn't want to come off the ground this one did well this one didn't and then the revelation came out as to why it looks like it does. <laughs> the crappy little welds they put on broke. And this thing had been sitting apparently uh, like this for quite some time going down a road. Look how shiny it is. I mean, that could be just from us bringing it home, but still. You get my point about how the suspension's worn out. I can put a bushing in there, but that leaf spring is probably junk but that leads me to <laughs> that axle may not be bent uh that axle might be straight we may only need to redo the suspension reuse the axles and put uh tires on it so let's get it apart and see if we can get a look at this axle and see what it is i'm probably just gonna go ahead and take the shackles loose here and on the other side and just drag the axle out or roll it backwards or whatever we can do something because uh all of this needs inspected good, and uh, I doubt we're going to be re reusing any of this stuff anyways. Just getting new. Let's get apart.
Yeah, it's good. All right, so now we can talk about how crummy trailers are really made. Um, so the wiring, obviously this is, you know, a short looking for a place to happen. Everywhere they just drill a hole and run it through with no protection. Or maybe it does, you know, something like this because, you know, it gets pinched because it's not supported or not put where it needs to be. See how that one was cut off from it. Anyways, I think flipping it over just makes it a lot easier. Uh, a lot of the deck boards are loose over there. Some of the screws are stripped out. You see they're not even screwed into these angle irons here. These look like a uh, two by three angle. Listen to that. Pretty thin. So I'm wondering if we're going to add anything else in here. Boy, look at how crooked this is. What a horrible, what a horrible job. Look how crooked that is. You know, just just crummy. Crummy craftsmanship. This is awful. All boogered up. Oh, yeah, look at that. It looks like I welded it. I don't know if that's, that's hardly even welded in place there. Something... Nothing in here, nothing there, just right there. That's the only weld on that. That one's the same way. Weld right there. Yeah, there might be a weld under it. Again, you know, nope, nothing to protect it. Shoot, look at that. That cross member's crooked as can be. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but that cross member right there goes at an angle like this. It's not even straight. see kind of how crappy it was done I mean there these should have been you know met right these should have met right here in the corner they never welded the bottom side up nice never welded that it's just what you could see I guess is all they weld <clears throat> that gap's pretty wide what they put in there anything Do you see anything in there? No, I don't see nothing. Just a, just a buttered up weld, that's all that is. I left it wide. Same thing here, it's tilted in. See this? The deck boards aren't held in anywhere. They're just bouncing, which works in our favor because they're all coming out. And then this axle, seeing how this was busted right here, it allowed the axle to shift forward and hit this cross member right there. Um, now you can see really good how it was rubbing on the bottom of that. Yeah. Rockwell axles. A little bit of play in that bearing. A little bit in that bearing, not horrible. Yeah, go figure. You know, if I was going to keep them, I would have busted them. Dovetail's not, not bolted down either. That's okay. You know, when I started looking at these trailers and the prices are just so ridiculous in cost, I thought I should just build one. And I'm like, nah, I don't want to take all that time. I was going to buy one. <laughs> I guess I should have just built one. So, Dexter Hardware, hangers, at least on that axle. This axle, the saddle is not Dexter, so that may have been replaced before. This may be a different axle. Hmm. Maybe just different hardware when they put it together. Mixed it all up, maybe. That one says Dexter as well possible they bought a pre oh there's a dexter tag right there there's a dexter tag right there that's a dexter axle Let's see it right there yep so one of these axles has been replaced whether it was this one or this one we don't know i can assume um that it was a bargain basement manufacturer this was probably original 
that may have been replaced. Judging by the paint, this looks like it's been replaced. That looks original. Hard to say. Eh, it don't matter. We'll make sure it's right. We may just replace these fenders. I don't go through all this work and then have them crummy fenders, so we'll probably order some up. We'll never be as easy to replace them as is right now, I guess. At least cut the stuff loose. Okay, well, we got some other things we're going to do. We're going to make provisions for a small winch up in this area. Uh, so we're going to put some um, metal across the, the bottom here of the deck. Or just cut the deck out and put the receiver there, the, the plate, so that uh, a winch could be mounted if, wanted, if we wanted one. Okay, cross members are thin, eighth inch. I think that's eighth. I don't think it's any bigger than that. I guess it could be, but I wish that showed up better, how crooked that cross member is. It doesn't show up in the camera nearly as bad as it does in person, but it goes that way on an angle. Anyways, got our work cut out for us. Time to get the tires off. Let's get a look at the brakes and the bearings and all that stuff and see what all it's going to take on that end of it. Um, and we're going to check that, that axle and see if it's bent see if it has the same camber as the other one it's kind of hard to tell because the one side's down so much lower it's funny we'll have to and eh, we'll check them out take me a little while but we'll get it fixed now you can see how that weld was so small and barely even touching and all the hangers are about the same about the same weld quality everywhere I look they're just about the same almost non-existent welds and they're just so tiny it's no wonder it broke loose and the farther you look at the hardware you can see what I was saying it's worn out so the next step is we're gonna get all the wheels off I'm gonna pull the hubs off <clears throat> look at the bearings look at everything and get a good look and do some checking see what we got and then I will order up what we need because once I get it apart I'll be able to see if the bushings in the uh, ends of the leaf springs are just bad or if it's the leaf spring itself it's worn out or if it's a through bolt or all of it so I don't order anything until I get it all apart that way I know where the dollar is going to add up to as far as all the things I can see ahead of time that I won't run into. This is a pretty simple trailer, you know, so there's not a whole lot of hidden stuff. So let's get it apart. How much longer do you think that was going to last? I remember back in the day, there was a few trailer manufacturers that gave you the option of new trailer tires or used car tires on trailer wheels or even car wheels. Um, it did that to make a cheap trailer and everything about it was cheap that's for sure this one follows suit I mean it's it's a cheap trailer wheels off next thing get the dust cap off I've had these pliers for quite a long time I don't think I would purchase them again but since I have them I will use them because they definitely help you get these off without damaging them see how they get underneath the lip there just wiggle it back and forth and off she comes this little cage just snaps over top of this jam nut see how that works it's got fingers that go over top of it and that tab right there locks it on the flat spot of the spindle once you get your bearing preload set and then we just take this all apart one by one, pull it out. Nut off. Washer. And the bearing itself. The bearing's no good. Look how it's been so hot. You can smell it. So that's no good. Pull this off and look at the back side. Let's 
can see why the brakes aren't working. The magnet's completely gone. So he had it apart. So he was less than truthful because you can't get that magnet out without taking that off. You know, it would be in here. There's a magnet that sits here. And uh, all these brakes are junk, so we'll just rip them off and throw them away. I want to inspect the places where the bearings ride and where the seal rides. Let me get over there. Right back in there. Alright, so they, they were in here and they cut it off. They cut the magnet off. So when he told me, he didn't know if the brakes worked because his brake control in his truck didn't work. And he bought this brand new. Hmm. So, again, you know, you take what people say with a grain of salt. A lot of grease on there. This is an easy lube hub. It's drilled and ported right here so that when you put the grease fitting on, it feeds grease into this cavity. You pop that seal out, so put the drum back in one of them wheels, and you can put a lug nut on the other side to kind of hold it, and then you can pop it up, because then you have the weight of the drum plus the wheel holding it out there, or you can stand on it, it makes it easier. Again, the same thing. The bearing's been overheated, not nearly as bad as the rears. Look how much play is in the cage. And that thing pretty rough so true to form another one of my projects will become a resurrection all right so this one uses the cotter pin and castle nut system notice there's no flat spot on that end of that spindle so you can't use that washer like the other one so you just pull that cotter pin out that's what keeps the nut from backing off and uh, take it apart like the other one. That inner bearing is okay, but I think we're just going to go ahead and replace them all. So whenever you have a bearing failure, it's important, or any time you're doing this, is to get all the old grease out because we don't know for sure, but that could be uh, the chrome plating that's coming off the bearing that was bad mixed in here, and that could definitely shorten the life of the new bearing that you're putting in. If I put in new bearings, I always replace the seal or the, the races as well because they're probably just as bad. And that you can see it right in there. You see the discoloration of the metal, how it changes, where the rollers, the bearings ride. You see that? Zoom in there. See right in here. Once I knock them out, I'll show you better. But, anyways, this could also be water mixed with the grease as well. So you want to make sure you get it all out. Well, this side's about the same, maybe not quite as bad, but regardless, we'll just take it all apart and replace it all. Let's see how bad these brakes are. Oh, there you go. That's what it's supposed to look like. There should be a magnet like this, and that magnet, when you put electric to it, it will grab the inside of the drum here, and when it does, it's going to as it rolls we're upside down so we're a little bit backwards but it's going to pull one way or the other and spread the brake shoes you see how the brake shoes spread back up spread the other way and that's how the electric brakes work and it's all by electric magnet so when you put 12 volts of this well brake controllers are a graduation of voltage but as you increase voltage to this it grabs on here and lets it slip less the more voltage, the more magnetic attachment you have and grab, and the harder they apply. All right, well, let's get this one apart. All right. See how this is all red grease with water? You see the water down in there. Okay, get it apart. After thinking about this for a little while, I think I know what's happened here. I think what may have happened was when they cut this with a torch or plasma or whatever they didn't bend this perfectly straight up and down so it caused that the bends to be off so it tilted it in a little bit because one was farther back than the other and that's why it's like this that is a horrible weld
right, so it's important to take the nuts loose from this suspension because the bolt is flying, kind of like a wood nut. Back it on there until it's about flush right there. See the splines there. See how that bolt's worn too. Oh, it's missing part of the part of the shank there. So there's the bushing I was talking about in the leaf spring. Oh wow. And there's nothing left of it. And more than likely the eyelet of this won't hold a bushing anymore. So we'll probably just order new leaf springs and just replace them because I can put plastic bushings in here, but they're going to wear out and look like this in no time because there's so much slop in there. So we'll just get the rest of this apart all the same way. So you see how that's oblonged. Take the bushing out of there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we'll need... The only thing on the suspension I think that we're going to use is the hangers. I think they're okay. Because they didn't spin. They don't have any wear in them. Um, I think I'm okay with reusing them. Now, you see what a crappy... Like, barely any weld right here. So we'll just go ahead and... We'll grind these out and we'll re-weld them. All the hangers. As long as... The other side is still good like this side but we're just going to go ahead and order up new leaf springs because all the bushings are worn out of them and you know they used to be much cheaper they're not as cheap right now but nothing yeah. is yeah it is what it is so um i think it's worth it just go ahead and get them i think i used to be able to buy these for like 15 or 17 dollars a piece i think they're 35 a piece now or something like that but whatever Good. Got the other one straight. I've, I've worked on the fenders a little bit. This is the one that was knocked in pretty hard here. I don't think it's going to look very good painted, but if I decide not to replace them, at least, you know, at least there's that. All right, so we got the two bad tires off, and this room was in bad shape. It looks like it's been painted, but the paint didn't stick to the primer. So. We may have to sandblast this tire, this wheel to get it nice and that one if we end up sandblasting we just have to sandblast all four of them you can see here it looks like the paint's ready to peel off right there yeah look at that just didn't stick to the primer so as far as the hangers go this side all three are in good shape uh, there's really no reason to replace them we're just going to add welds to them uh, that side the front one middle one's good we're going to replace the back one both shackles because they're worn out oval all that kind of stuff all the equalizers I mean we're gonna replace two equalizers we're gonna replace all the shackles and all the mounting bolts backing plates with brakes for um, one axle for sure we might do both and then the leaf springs I'm not certain on leaf springs yet but I'm gonna see what the cost is if it's reasonable enough and I can stay under the budget then we're gonna go ahead and replace them if not then I'm gonna consider reusing them and the way I look at this, the budget is for what I gave for the trailer, what it needs in repairs. I need to be well below what a new one costs, including my labor at X amount of dollars an hour because I don't work for free. And we're going to rewire it because the wiring was awful. So I just yanked it all out. Um, and there was no breakaway switch on it. So we'll add that, make it safe, make it right, put all good lights on it everywhere. But if we're getting close to the budget, I'll make it right. I'm just not going to 
uh, do it like I do most everything, you know, way too far. So now I'm going to go look at parts, see about getting them ordered, and see where we're at on cost.